This is a problem right here. It's the sum of three consecutive integers is 81. Find the three numbers. Do you ever wonder why? What's the purpose? Well, today we're going to learn how to link it to make it purposeful for you. Okay, but before we even begin, I want you to attempt this problem any way you want to attempt it. Take a couple of minutes, write it on your paper, try to figure it out, and we're going to see if uh, we have different approaches to answering this question. Before we begin, I want you to take a really close look at this word right here, consecutive. What does the word consecutive mean? What does it mean to you? And give me an example if that's the way it's, it's easier for you to explain. Um, like one after the other. One after the other. Okay, so give me an example of uh, three consecutive numbers. One, two, three. One, two, three. Okay. One after the other. One, two, three. Are those the only consecutive numbers that exist? No. 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 Infinite. Infinite consecutive numbers. Now give me an example, Chris Nell, of non-consecutive numbers. Uh, let's say seven, nine, ten. Seven, nine, and ten. They're not consecutive. Maybe these two are. But not seven and nine. But not seven and nine, okay. Okay, let's look at one more word in this lesson. Sum. Hector, what does sum mean to you? It's the addition when you put them together. When you put them together. Fantastic. So it basically means addition, when you put them together. Okay, so now let's read the sentence. Chris, can you read that sentence for me again? See if it makes a little more sense. The sum of three consecutive integers is 81. Find the three numbers. Okay, Annabella, yeah. we're finding three numbers that are what? That are next to each other. Next to each other. And Daniela, whose sum is what? 81. 81. Okay, now attempt the problem. We have a clear understanding, I believe. Four. Having whole class discussions of student solution strategies not only builds a community of learners, but allows students to see, hear, and understand multiple approaches to solving the same problems. This in turn helps to build relational understanding leading to greater student achievement. Presenting students with challenging open-ended problems then having them defend their work solutions will result in students learning associated skills and concepts at a deeper level than if they are simply asked to recite factual knowledge or to apply procedures in a mechanical way to problems that have a single correct answer. I did it the harder way. <laughs> I, I just, I kept adding three numbers until I got something that equal to one, and I realized it was 20. Okay. You, but you still got it, and it's very interesting because that's the way it makes sense in your mind. How many of you would have taken her approach? I took it. Again. You took it. Did anybody take it algebraically? No. Nobody. Interesting. Okay. Some students just used, as one student had said before, common sense. And they just use a division operation to be able to solve it. When another group solved it algebraically, using variables. And another group solved it in their own way, but were able to justify how they got the answer. So, my main focus, my lesson objective, was to teach them how to translate words into algebraic expressions. So one group had a very clear understanding of how to do that. So I went ahead and worked off them. I brought the students up to the board and allowed them the opportunity, though, to explain their methods. I wanted to show them that there is def definitely many different ways to answer a problem and for them to uh, share their perspective on the problem. The ways you got these problems. Believe it or not, every single group did it a little different. Okay, so I'm going to start over here. Please pick somebody to represent your group and come on up to show me. All right, Chris, now it's you. I got the answer because it's saying numbers, so I use a variable. It's n plus n plus 1 
plus n plus 2 because you're finding three different numbers. And that equals 81. So I can buy like terms as 3n plus 3 equals 81 minus 3 minus 3. It's 3n equals 79 divided by 3 divided by 3. n equals 26, 27, and 28. Okay, sounds good. Um, put an eight right there. Put an eight. Yeah, you got it right. Excellent. Great job. Nice. Okay, so you guys decided to use a variable. You chose N as your variable. Can you choose any letter? Yes. yes I could you could. Can you use a capital letter? Yeah. Yeah? You can use whatever letter you want? Okay. Sounds good, sounds good. Now, that group over there, pick a representative, please. All right, Chris, come on up. I, uh, I did it the simple way. Okay. I just found three numbers that when you add them together, they give you something that ends with a one. So then I figured you'd have to be 26, 27, and 28. Oh, that's extremely interesting. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Okay, isn't that completely different than what sometimes we think? So it's really important to value everyone else's strategy. He said, he thought, I need to pick the three numbers, just like he said, that would end with a one at the end. And then I guess, how'd you end up, how did you figure out it was in the 20s? Because well, 80 divided by 4 is 2, so then, well, 8 divided by 4 is 2, okay. so then they all have to be 2. Very nice method, nice. Okay, and then over here, I, I mean, it, it's perfect the way all of you think so differently. Uh, Ernesto, would you like to try it out? Oh, um, I didn't really got the right one. It was mine. <laughs> it was Hector. Hector, you want Hector to be the rep for the group? Come on up, Hector. Um, we did it like... We told that um, we couldn't use over the 30s because if we use three numbers of 30, it's 90. So it's over the answer. So it should be over, I mean, between the 20s and the 30s. So we tried out first 20s, 27, 28, and 29. And it gave us, I believe it was 84. So the, the, next, the next few numbers was 26, 27, and 28. Okay. And that's the answer. And that's the answer. They did it by trial and error. Yeah. Okay, three different methods, three different strategies. We still got the same number. Now, I'm going to focus on the algebraic way because today we're going to learn how to translate words into algebraic expressions. You did a fantastic job, Bill. Okay, now I want you to look here. If we're talking about three consecutive integers, sometimes it would be great to split up those integers. Maybe say... Number one, number two, number three. Do you think that's a good method? Do you like that? Do you like listing it? No, no you don't? Okay, so how about we just then, by looking at this problem, how about we kind of break them up? Can we, do you like that? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so we'll say this is the first one, first integer. Why would the second integer be n plus one? It's a consecutive number. It's a consecutive so it's number. The number you did plus, plus one. So it could be consecutive. Right, plus one. So it's a number you did plus one. Great. So this would be the second consecutive integer. Okay. So you can clearly say one, two, and what's the third one? And why is it n plus two? The first number you use plus two after two consecutive numbers. That's right. Plus one is the second number? Plus two is the third number? Okay. What do you notice that's in between those sets of numbers? What do you notice, Chelsea? That they're adding them together. They're adding them together. And why did you choose to add and not subtract or multiply or divide? It's easier. What key word in the problem gave you to show that method? Uh, it's positive. Okay, positive. Nice. And then we want to come up with the same total, a total, the sum, so it equals 81. Now, I like the way, Chris, now that you combine the ends. Okay? It was almost like, here's one, here's the other, here's the other. How many ends do you have together? Three. 
three. There it is, one, two, three. She put little loops to represent it. And then she combined the constants, one and two. What's one plus two? Three, three. good. And then we solve an equation like we normally do. Um, and then, of course, divide by three, she got 26. 26 represents which one of these? And good. 27? So 26 plus one? Can I actually substitute this number in to check my answer? Yeah. Yeah. So 28 plus two. Am I right by saying that? No, no. it's 26 oh. plus two. That's right, you caught me. It's 26 plus two. I can't say 28 plus two to check it because N, this is the original. N plus one, N plus two. See that? Okay, do you have any questions? All right, it's your turn.